Hello and welcome to episode 235 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is June 17th, 2024. And today I'm wearing my beautiful um, shawl or white scarf that I knit in two color brioche. And I think this was one of the first project or maybe the first project where I knit two color brioche with a pattern. And I got the pattern from this beautiful book called Knitting Fresh Brioche by Nancy Marchand. And it's a um, it's mainly a pattern collection with different two color brioche patterns. And then at the end of the book, there are several um, um, patterns for... <laughs> <laughs> it sounds a bit weird, but the first part is just the stitch pattern. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. And then the second part, there are um, proper projects that you can do. So one of the projects, for example, that I still want, would love to do is this one, which is a two color brioche triangular shawl knit out of a mohair yarn. And the scarf that I'm wearing, it's not a a proper pattern in the book it's just the stitch pattern i picked out the stitch pattern i um that's the stitch pattern in the book and um so i picked the yarn and then i did a gauge swatch calculated how many stitches i was going to need to get a white scarf or a shawl and then cast on and i just kept repeating the pattern until i felt this was long enough <laughs> and it got to be really quite long and I love the fact that the pattern looks so beautiful on both sides so this was my right side while I was knitting and this is the the wrong side the dark side and you can see there is a slight difference in the pattern because Nancy Marchand just um, did a normal two color pattern so if I were to knit another pattern from her book I would use the stitch the stitches from um, the soccer magician's book, uh, double knitted, double knitting brioche. So he found out a way to increase and decrease in two color brioche in a way that makes the both sides look the same. So that's even a notch better, but I still love this uh, shawl, even though I didn't know that technique back then. The light side, I used drops alpaca lace I think or drops lace and this is I think 70% alpaca and 30% silk and for the dark yarn I used Hansa Farms alpaca lace yarn which is a pure alpaca baby alpaca yarn but I think the colors um, go together really nicely and I just love the way the shawl looks but I love it even more um, I love even more the way how it feels. It's so soft. The yarn itself is, both yarns are really soft, but because of the squishy nature of brioche, it's it seems even softer than, than just the yarn itself. <laughs> Difficult to explain. Anyway, so that's the shawl or scarf I'm wearing. And the pullover I'm wearing is another beautiful yarn. This is Noro yarn. It's the, um, I think it's a Seku lace. But it's a lace yarn by Noro and it's a mix of cotton and silk and a bit of wool, I think. Not quite sure what else is in there. And um, it's these beautiful colors that Noro puts together. The pullover was knit from one sleeve. It was supposed to be knit from both sleeves towards the middle. And then there should have been a visible three needle bind off in the front and back. But I chose to knit one um part of the pullover to the end of the neckline here and then I knit the other part to the end of the other neckline and then I just knit it uh, sewed it together with a kitchener stitch so the seam is completely invisible and um, yeah you can't really tell where I started and where I stopped knitting which is something I like and I thought the invisible uh, no the 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 visible seam with a three needle bind off I think that's really nice if you have a rather plain yarn and you want to give it just a bit of a detail but because the yarn is so colorful I felt uh, I don't need that um anything else I think 
I think that's it about what I'm wearing. Then on to finish objects. And before I come to, to this week's finish object, I'll just quickly show last week's finish object again. And that was the Squiggle and Stripe Shawl by Stephen West, knit out of Hansa Farms brushed alpaca. And um, I said if, it, if there was a difference, I was going to show it again. I still think there isn't a big difference to what it looked like last week, but every time I wash um, something that I that comes straight off the needles, it always looks a bit better after it's been washed. And I also snipped most of the ends. This one that I just noticed, uh, I missed that when I um, cut off the other ends. But otherwise, this is now completely finished and washed and beautiful and it can now be given away. So that was just quickly uh, from last week. And now today's finished object is already has already been washed and blocked. And that has been seriously blocked, not just uh, laid flat to dry. And that's the um, crochet pullover I crocheted from Shelley Husband's book, Granny Square Patchwork. That's the book I showed that already last week, but now I checked which size square I crocheted. So this book contains six different sizes of squares and every size has several different motifs. So for size two, it's these seven different patterns that are in the book. And I picked four of them for the sleeves. So I picked those three and that one over here. And um, for the front and back, I chose the biggest um, size of square um, to make sure it's big enough to work as a front and back and I think I added like two or three rounds for each of those just to get it really to be big enough so these are the five different patterns um, for the for size six squares and I crocheted this one down here oh and the one next to it so the the two in the lower in the bottom row and this is what it looks like now that I've washed and blocked them and seamed everything together. This is what the pullover looks like. And I'm really, really happy. The color does get blown out a bit now, but it, I think it helps <laughs> in seeing the pattern. But I was a bit worried that with this dark blue, the pattern wouldn't show up, but I think it shows up really nicely. So this is the other sleeve. And then the other side of the pullover looks like this. And this sleeve looks like this. And this is the second sleeve. And I'm really, really, really very happy. So I will be wearing this pullover next week, no matter what the what kind of weather we have. If it gets really hot, I'll just be a little warm. If it stays as cold as it is right now, I might wear something underneath. Um, yeah, but I'm definitely going to wear it next week and then I have to decide which side to wear uh, to the front and then the second time I wear the pullover I'll make sure to wear the other side to the front because that's one of the things that I love about this pullover. It's completely symmetrical so it doesn't really have a back or a front and I can turn it around anytime I like. <laughs> it's crocheted out of a pure cotton. It was called Diamant uh, which is diamond in German. And it's, um, the yarn runs 150 meters for every 50 grams, but the yarn's been discontinued some time ago already. But it's a very nice cotton. I like it a lot. Yeah, so I was a bit, it, it was a bit, bit of a surprise that it was already done because the sleeves had to be shortened um, because I didn't have enough yarn for the second sleeve. But I'm really happy with the way the pullover now looks. And then next week you can decide what you think about the pullover on me. So that's all the finished objects for today. I didn't cast on anything new. I know, quite a surprise. Um, I had a baby pullover or little girl's dress planned. I still have it planned. I wanted to cast it on. I just didn't have the time. And then yesterday I signed up for a very quick uh, test knit. So those are the two projects that I will definitely start this week. And um, maybe I can, I can uh, keep it with those two new projects, unless something comes up. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. No promises. Now, on to works in progress. As usual, I'll show you my socks. 
And I continued knitting on the pattern three worlds sock, which are two worlds on my sock because I'm using just two colors and two different techniques. And I started the toe. I've just finished the, um, the pattern now. So this is the number of rounds that I was supposed to knit um, for the foot. And I tried it on before I got there and I think it was going to be too big if I'd knitted the whole chart and then started the toe. And my sister said she would love to have the toe, the anatomical toe again. So you decrease on one side first and then you do more decreases and then you Kitchener stitch the rest of the stitches together. I wanted her to try it on today, but we're not going to meet because her plans changed. But I hope to see her tomorrow and then once she's tried them on, she tried it on, um, I can think about how to finish the toe. So this is going to be a um, improvised toe. Um, and maybe I did too many decreases already. I don't know. But I checked the chart for the second sock and uh, I now have enough rows to finish the fish. But the chart doesn't include all the stitches on the edge. So I can do the decreases on the other sock without um, getting into the color work. So this sock might get finished fairly soon and then I have to knit another one. <laughs> and it has those letterback jacquard stitches and it has lots of charts. So uh, and lots and lots and lots of stitches. So it's going to be quite a bit of work to do the second sock. But still, I'm really happy to have the first sock almost, almost finished. Okay, then the second sock is the Bigfoot sock for my friend's husband. And there I got a bit, quite a bit of the foot done. Um, nothing spectacular, just some knitting without having to look or concentrate on it. Um, and I have to still add quite a few rounds. <laughs> And then the third sock pattern that I have on the needles, um, that's the Helix Remix pattern from the Sock Partners. And I decided to turn this into a phone sock. <laughs> so I only have to knit one. And I started changing up the pattern a little bit. So that's the sock. This is what it looks like now. So in the beginning, I did everything as per pattern, which turned out really, really loose. So those stitches got really long and I was quite unhappy with the fabric I was getting. So now that I know that nobody's going to wear this as a sock and my phone doesn't mind, I changed to doing two wraps per stitch for those long stitches instead of three. And I do prefer the way the um, sock comes out now. It's still quite loose, but it's not quite that floppy anymore. And I've come to the next color so it's not just only green and blue I've now had a bit of pink and now the turquoise started and if I turn the sock like this you can see this nice uh, the way the stitches come to a point here and then on the other side you can see that um, here we have just knit stitches without the the mini cables and without the slip stitches so that's really interesting and um, there's still quite a few rounds to do. Um, but I think it's quite obvious that this bit is tighter than this bit. So it sort of has this form. But as I said, for my phone, that's okay. It's going to fit in there. I, tr I tried it on. <laughs> you know, I love trying uh, my knits on and whether I try them on me or on the phone or whatever. I don't mind. Yeah, so that's... Um, it's a lot more enjoyable now that the stitches aren't quite as floppy and, um, and I know it's, um, I just have to do the one. <laughs> That's quite good. Okay, then on to my bigger projects and I put in quite a bit of work into the Lanatus pullover and uh, I managed to finish the first ball of yarn. So this is my main color and I finished 100 grams now of that color and it's gotten fairly long so i yeah i managed to to finish this um pattern which is the same as this one and then i did 
part of the round um, there's always two uh, single color rounds in between the patterns so i did part of the first one and then i ran out of yarn i still have this much left from the um, colorful yarn from the hundert wasser yarn and i've now decided to cut this off um, so i can use it for the sleeves and um, I'm not quite sure whether I'm going to need a second one. Otherwise, I could have started a second one with the second um, main color yarn. But there's still quite a bit left. So maybe this is going to be enough um, to finish the pullover. But we'll see. And I could have used the other end of the ball to, to knit the sleeves. But I think this would have been... There would have been the possibility of mixing things up and, and getting the yarn in a tangle. And I don't want that. And I don't mind weaving in two more ends just to make my life easier. So I'm going to cut this off and then knit the sleeves. And then um, I can see I can finish the um, front and back once the sleeves are done. Still enjoying knitting this so much and looking forward to wearing this one day. Not in a hurry enjoy the knitting too much to be in a hurry <laughs> so that's that then i did a little bit of knitting on the mama keith dress not a whole lot but the front and back have grown a little bit so i think last time i'd only just started from underneath the sleeve it's a bit difficult to show <laughs> So um, here, here we go. That's where I started the front and back. And this is now what I've done. When I try it on, it's quite interesting because this is lower than this because the decreases happen, happen here and the increases happen here. So um, it's sometimes a bit difficult to, to tell where I'm at. But I've decided to knit straight for a bit longer because, as I said, it's fairly wide. Um, and I will do more increases at some point but not quite yet. So um, I'm thinking of maybe adding the same height without increases and then slowly um, put some increases in again. So that's the plan for this one. And then I continue knitting on the cardigan, the purple cardigan that I'm knitting with um, Hansa Farms brushed alpaca, the same as the Stephen West shawl. But I'm using the yarn held double. I'm using an eight millimeter needle. So it's a really quick knit. And I picked up the stitches for the sleeves. Um, when picking up stitches, I really like to um, work with the ratio of three stitches for every four rounds if I'm knitting in stockinette stitch. So that's what I did. I ended up with a few stitches fewer than the pattern calls for, but I think that's okay. I know this is going to be wide enough because I, ha I knit 25 centimeters for the armhole and, um, and I think it's more important that I have a um, good ratio between the stitches and the rows so everything looks, um, it's not too many stitches, not too few stitches what I'm trying to say. So it doesn't get pulled together or it doesn't get ruffled or anything and it just looks very even. And as long as it fits, I think looking even is more important than hitting the same, the exact number that's in the pattern. And I've now calculated how many rounds I have to knit to get to the point where I have to start decreasing. So I'm going to decrease fewer stitches so I end up with the same number of stitches that's in the pattern. And um, yeah, should be a fairly quick knit as well. Maybe I can finish the first sleeve this week. And then all I have to do is the second sleeve because there's going to be no finishing um, here. So there, there'll be no button band or no collar or anything. It's just going to be a very simple and easy um, to knit and easy to wear cardigan. Yeah, so that is that. I'm very quick today, but I think that's okay. Maybe this video can be a little shorter than the last ones. Now, I did not continue knitting on the skirt. I was really happy I picked it up again, but last week was just too busy. And uh, I again have only one shawl with me because I again did not knit on the A Blue Mystery Knit Along by Susanna. I see I will pick it up at some point, I promise. 
but I kept knitting on the um, Goff's Place Mystery Knit Along by Kate Davies. And I started the second clue. So in case you don't want to see it, look away. But for the rest, I can show you this is clue one. And I knit the first part of the stitches. Then the other half I put on hold. So this sort of stays the way it is at the moment. And after I knit those stitches, I cast on more stitches. And that was um, sort of the first surprise. And then after I cast on the stitches, I started knitting in the round and then I knit several rounds with this color. Then I changed to the pink and now I, I'm starting a pattern. And with this pattern, I'm also doing decreases at four of four points and then I'm again getting this shape so that there'll be that shape twice and um, for the main part that I'm knitting now I'm going to um, use three of the colors this was the first one that I used and then the fifth color will be in the middle so that's very exciting and when I saw the um, the next clue I tried to think about how many rounds um, there are and I thought if I do like one fourth of the number of rounds every week that should be fine but then I realized I was first of all I was looking at the number of rows rounds in the chart and the middle isn't charted but also the first couple of rounds took so long because there are no decreases there and it's a lot of stitches so I'm really happy I finished that and for this week I will just try to get um as far as possible with this chart, I will have to int introduce the next color. And then once I have this color sequence going, I will try and get as far as I can. If I manage half the chart, I'll be very happy. If I manage less, that's okay, because the number of stitches is going to decrease. And then hopefully I can do the rest of the chart next week. And then that will still leave me one week for doing the middle bit with the last color. So it's very exciting. And I'm very curious um, what the next two clues are going to look like but still a lot of time to finish knitting that so I'm not showing anything anymore in case you're looking away and I'm already at the knit along and crochet along so for the knit along with the haramaki and the reversible hats I continued knitting on my very colorful hat it's this abo um, ball of yarn subscription yarn and I just added some more rounds and I think now the color repeat is a little more obvious so like this white and turquoise bit repeats here and I'm just repeating it again but as I said with the number of stitches the stripes don't always look the same so here is mainly pink and yellow but here's some green and in this stripe the green is Where's the green? It's not really green. It's more, more of a turquoise as well. So, and it's more like on this end or here, but it's not up here. So it's quite funny how um, the colors come out differently every time there's a color repeat. It's quite interesting. And I don't always look at this knitting while I knit because it's one of my, I don't have to concentrate on it, just knit stitches in the round um, kind of project. But sometimes I just look at it anyway, just to see what color I'm knitting and to see how the um, stripes progress. So that's a lot of fun. And then the last project is my um, spiral granny square crochet top. And I continued knitting on the top. And I think last week I told you that I was running out of yarn because I only had two balls of yarn um, in the original color. And I sort of knew or it suspected that the next batch would be a different dye lot but I wasn't really thinking if I had thought about it I could have started the second square with the second ball of yarn instead of continuing the first one which is what I did if I'd done that I would have had two squares the same and then I could have added the new um, colorway um, on both the pieces and I would have had a top that's the same front and back but I did not think about it so I just continued crocheting my first square which looks like this and then the new yarn arrived and I'm not quite sure how uh, visible it is on screen I think they look quite the same 
But in real life, this is quite a bit lighter and this is quite a bit darker. So the pieces are not going to be the same. But I just didn't want to undo what I'd already crocheted. So I just kept going. Um, I'm still sort of hoping it might be big enough with just two balls of yarn, but I don't think it's realistic, but I think it's going to be fairly big. So it's already fairly big, not too tiny. And even if I have to crochet around it with the new colorway, for one, maybe the difference isn't that visible once it's been crocheted. Um, and think about it, I could even stripe it in. No, I don't want to stripe it in. It spirals, I don't want to change color. <laughs> I will finish this ball of yarn. I will start the next if I need more size. And then the other side is just going to be a little different. I'm not planning on um, giving this top any shaping or anything. So again, just like the pullover, there won't be a proper back and front. And then I can decide whether I want the slightly darker um, piece as my front or as my back. And I can wear it like this or like that. So that's the plan. Yeah, really happy with it. Still enjoy the crocheting of the granny spiral a lot. I love the beautiful colors and I'm looking forward to finishing the first piece. Maybe I'll just stop after the this ball of yarn and start the second piece. Maybe I'll just add a few rounds with the new color. I don't know. I'll probably just see what I feel like doing and that's what I'll do. <laughs> yeah, that's everything. I knit and crocheted last week. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.